Hello and welcome to Free Cheese episode 463. I'm your Joe Dix, joined by Mark Augustiniak. What's up? Matt Sellner. Whoa. The Free Cheese is a weekly video game podcast about video games, brought to you once a week by thefreecheese.com. How does a mascot for the once third best selling soda brand help to create Google Stadia? Find out later on the Free Cheese. But first, Mark, Matt, when's the last time you had a 7 up? Oh, whew. Uh, a long ass time ago. Um. <laughs> I want to say, wow, it's probably been over 10 years. Maybe 20. I don't, yeah, I, uh, see the thing is, I don't drink, I don't drink like a lot of like, um, like Coke or, or Sprite or anything like that to begin with. So when I do, it's usually just Coke. It's very rare that I go for the lemon lime of the colas, and it's sure. very, very rare that Seven Up is the choice over Sprite. So I'm gonna say probably a long time as well without remembering the exact. Unless it snuck up on me in somewhere where I blacked oh. out and had a Seven Up. <laughs> but I think when I would have Seven Up, because I think I was the opposite. I would love the more fruitier. Uh, sodas um cherry 7 up was like the champagne for me as a kid yeah that was a yeah that's what i imagine right that's what i imagine champagne would taste like <laughs> i feel like for me it was definitely that yeah we would have those like random Christmas party or something like that, and it was like, okay, let's load up on a bunch of two liters, and then, yeah, let's throw a seven up in there, and yeah, with seven up or cherry seven up specifically got thrown into the mix. It was like, oh, okay, yeah. Um, well, I I did a little walking this morning to the local gas station, and they don't carry it. So then I walked in the opposite direction to the grocery store, and I happened upon. A fresh <laughs> ice cold bottle oh, of Seven Up here, just to to get into the podcast this week. Do a little. I wasn't now, sure while he's taking a sip, mm-hmm. disclaimer: Joe is not celebrating a platinum trophy. This is purely for the episode today. Yeah, it's pretty. It's it's uh, it's good. It tastes different than Sprite. Yeah, I, like honestly, I always thought it did have like a more distinctive flavor. Um, Sprite always tasted a little flat to me, if that makes sense. Like Seven Up felt more carbonated, I guess. I don't Fizzy. know how to describe it. Yeah, spiky. <laughs> yeah, there yeah, there are some ups, bubbles in yeah. here. It does have a. S- <laughs> yeah, there are. Yeah, I'm good with uh, I'm good with this. I'm glad I bought two for four dollars. Did you ever play no, um, the 7-Up yeah. game in school? Yes! The old heads-up 7-Up? Yeah. That sounds familiar. What, 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 I need a reminder. Uh, it's, it's a game to make you feel either more or less validated as a person. Um, <laughs> all the kids in the classroom, besides one, I think, would have their heads down on their desks and their thumbs up, I believe. And a, one kid would go around putting down your, closing your thumb. And then once it was done, like, I guess seven of those kids would get up for some reason or be picked or, or, or maybe it was like multiple kids would go through and you had to guess who was the person that put down your thumb. Yes. This sounds familiar. I think I have played this one. Is that okay? I couldn't There's remember the, what, I remember the thumbs going down and I remember saying heads up, seven up, but what were, the, yeah, this it's, was, it's the, been a bit. this was the more unathletic version of duck duck goose i feel like yeah the, the, you don't have to chase yeah, no anyone. running it's involved just like a, it's like a guessing game or something yeah no duck duck goose was my gm that pop-up time i liked having my thumb touched i remember <laughs> that <laughs> well, like, we, we need to bring back names of <laughs> i mean <laughs> just putting that out there i don't know 
Why are we talking about thumbs and seven up this week? You might ask, uh, especially if you were not around thirty years ago. But uh, as you've noticed by the title of this episode, uh, four hundred and sixty-three colon cool spot. Uh, cool spot was a video game starring the mascot of Seven Up, the soda brand. Um, honestly, it's probably been a super long time since they've done this. Uh, but Seven Up, the little red dot. If you look at the Seven Up logo, the red dot in between the seven and the word up had a name called The Spot, and they turned it into a mascot, gave him sunglasses, uh, and thus was born Cool Spot, the video game. Um, they made a couple of these. I mean, Spot was, and, and we'll talk here in a little bit, but there were, like, a few, more than a few, mascot platformers in the 1990s that existed on i feel like the 16-bit era was rife with it but looking back i think there were a lot in the 8-bit era as well Mm -hmm. um cool spot funnily enough i don't believe was the first spot video game you had its predecessor that was more of a puzzle game that would later get ported to game boy etc um but cool spot as it is and as we're talking about this week was first released in april of 1993 so almost 30 years old uh first released on the sega genesis in april and then hit the mega drive in europe in may uh would later come to super nintendo in september that same year uh and then got ports uh across game gear master system game boy amiga uh in 94 uh, originally developed by Virgin Games USA, published by Virgin Games USA, programmed by David Perry with music by Tommy Tallarico himself. Uh, yeah. We don't really have a bo- back of the box quote here for Cool Spot. I'm going to double check. There's not. Uh, so Tommy was the oh, one who uh, who ripped off Wipeout in the beginning. Yes, exactly. Um, and if you go to the sound select in the uh, the options menu, you can read where that's called. I think was it Surfing Tune. Hmm. There's Groovy Tune, Surf Tune, uh, something like that. Yeah. The back of the box is, like, incredibly blurry here. Yeah, charge something and... I can't. That's impossible. There's no way. How's there not a bigger... It's better off just reading an ad for (laughs) 7-Up. Yeah, I think it's probably what we should do. Uh, Here, we'll read the Master System box. No way! Your Cool Spot chums are locked away. Yes way! You, as Cool Spot, are here to save the day. There's a lot of capitalization happening here. Mm. Quit gawping? (laughs) Gawping. This is G-A-W-P-I-N-G. Gawping over the dreamy scenery. The awesome animation and most savory sound around. Play, man. This is the hairiest. What? What? Is there something in the 7-Up? Did I, like, change? (laughs) I read that exactly as it was written. Okay. What the hell is the 90s? Cool (laughs) spot. The 90s were, were a time, man. Everybody was all jacked up on cool spot. So, I, Mark, this game made its way to our list this year. Of course, listeners, if this is your first episode, you were drawn to this because you've been looking for that hot, cool spot content that has, you've so been lacking. Uh, this season of the Free Cheese Podcast, we've each nominated 15 games. Every week, we talk about one of them, and we rank that on a list called The List. Uh, you can follow along with all the rankings so far at thefreecheese.com slash the list. Mark, this was one of your 15. Oh, sure Why was. did you choose cool spot uh because this came from my youth where i was a sucker for brand mascots and uh 
characters with sunglasses, as the 90s was full of. Man, your world's big and fine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this this was a blockbuster rental, and I can't remember if I rented it more than once. It might have been just the one time, but that beginning part was so impactful to me for some reason, and... You know, like, Wipeout was a song that would be played in my house, but because my oldest brother played drums, and he would just play to a lot of oldie stuff, and, like, soft, whatever was allowed in the house, basically. <laughs> and, um, so I, I remember hearing that song a lot, and then, uh, I think I liked how the game triggered my imagination probably more than the game itself back then. Um, I would try to recreate Cool Spot. I would draw Cool Spot in my sketchbooks often. I had Legos. I would try to recreate the 7-Up bottle out of Legos as well as Cool Spot, but we didn't have a lot of circle pieces, so Cool Spot was a red square. Um, yeah. So basically that. I didn't get too far in the game when I rented it. I remember just being on a beach and not knowing what, where the hell to go or what to do. Um, I'm curious if this game came out before or after Vector Man. Uh, only because they, the projectile you shoot reminded me very much of Vector Man, but they did. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I had that thought as a kid. Um, but yeah, Vector Man is October twenty fourth, nineteen ninety five. Two and a half years later, cool, cool spot might be an influence there. We'll see. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just something I wanted to revisit. I, I didn't have necessarily negative thoughts of Cool Spot. It was just more like, why did I play this? Why was I into it? I wanted my older self to try to understand my younger self somehow. <laughs> and here we are. Made everyone suffer through it. No, I remember <laughs> renting this game more than once. Because really? this game did have, like... There's something very alluring about this game. Um, just... It does that have, like, a level scene... of polish to it, believe it or not. Yeah, like, there's, like... I don't know. I, I the way that I think everything is drawn, I think the the spot himself is very animated. I think that he's yeah. got like a good flow to him. I think like his movement is very unique as a character, but I think the levels themselves like they've got kind of depth to them. I think even just the opening that beach scene like it's <laughs> in the end I think it makes for really weird video game levels. Everyone that you play through, the fact that you're like the the levels are very vertical, even though they mm. shouldn't be, but they are. And I think that there's a lot of like character in each level, the way it's drawn, the way that like, they don't feel like, I don't know, going through the beach, like you kind of like go up a hill a little bit and then down into this little cutout that swings back around and then up around that and down under a chair. Like it, it's like contiguous. It's not this, like, I, I don't know. It, it I feel like certain platformers, like even think about Super Mario Brothers, if you will, it feels the same throughout an entire level. Sonic the Hedgehog, you know what I mean? Like it is different layout, but because the scenery is basically the same and you're always going through a loop or whatever, like there's that. But this feels like there's some like you're going on a journey from beginning to end. Granted, a little too vertical. But yeah, I remember being just like impressed with the way it looked and felt. The sweat of the 7-Up bottle, all that stuff was like very realistic looking um and cool which yeah matt did you play this at all when you were younger or well so i thought i did when it was put on the list up until like a month ago so i had said game boy version which was this weird puzzle game so in december when mark put this on the list i said huh i guess we really enjoyed that puzzle game a lot can't wait to go back and (laughs) so yeah not until like probably about a month ago from recording uh, i was shown proper platforming cool spot i was like all right this is more a video game so that's a long-winded way of saying no i had never played this (laughs) until until prepared for this episode um Uh, i will say 
Oh, oh. I was going to say one thing about the polish. Uh, what I really like that health bar. There's no health bar. It's just him yeah. deflating. Like, yeah. that easily could have been, yeah. you know, a health bar that evenly divided five hits or whatever. But the fact that they animated that, him, like, <laughs> like the cap, I get, like, him just be more and more bent and shrivel. Um, that was something that stuck out to me uh, in terms of, like, that level of polish you were saying. Well, and I think in that same regard, the way that they measure health, they also measure your, like, level success rate by how cool you are. You collect these little spots throughout. The the whole objective of the game is to move spot through a level, collecting a minimum of 30% of, or or rather, 30 individual collectibles, uh, which are these little, like, red coins. And when you've collected 30, you reach the end, and one of Spot's friends, locked away in a cage, can be shot out of the cage. You can unlock it because you've collected 30 of these, right? You're cool enough. And, and yeah, they measure it by whether or not you are cool enough. So 30, collecting 30 means you have 30% coolness. And like they very easily could have just said, like, you got 30 coins. You can now unlock the thing. But they instead opted for 30% cool. Question. Did you play on easy or normal? Hmm. Probably normal. Uh, yeah, whatever the default was. Okay. I played through this a couple of times in different fashions. Uh, okay. I kind of played this as far as I could on my own. Like, I, I did a couple of really solid runs getting as far as I could. Uh, through some frustration with whatever, I then started messing around with Game Genie cheats and seeing what the rest of this game had to offer. Uh, at one point I did just the native um, level select cheat where you get to see David Perry's face pop up and walk you through <laughs> like turning on different things. And that, yeah, I was like jumping around and just trying different things. So okay. kind of was all over the place with this one. I was only curious because I started on whatever the default was and then I switched to easy and yeah. I I don't know if I'm remembering it correctly, but it, it made it seem like when you lower the difficulty, it lowers the threshold of cool spots to collect. Because I thought I needed 60% on, you know what? on the normal, You're, and yeah. then it was 30 on easy. But if you want that extra life at the end, you still got to get about 60. And I was like, oh, that's just that. Because like, they, they rate no, you you're by, right. like, you're on that balloon. And all your points have you going up and closer and closer to the extra life or something like that. And then um, you're, you're guaranteed extra life if you get 64% or something like that every time. Yeah, and I now that you're mentioning it, I the most recent interaction I had with the game was watching a speed run from GDQ 2018. And the runner ran it on easy because that's the... He said that uh, the higher difficulties just make it a little bit more challenging to platform and get through the optimal run was on yeah. so i'm remembering that it was 30 percent for that but yeah there's you're like, totally right and it's not only that there's also like less enemies on the screen and it doesn't take as many hits yeah. to kill them which i think easy is the honestly the best way to it feels it feels the intended way normal feels like a new game plus to me for some reason yeah yeah i definitely play on normal because now that you say it was 60, I was always kind of concerned that I I felt like I had to explore because I was concerned I wouldn't have enough uh, cool to unlock my friend. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, I definitely... I think that first level, I went all the way around. a couple, Like, the first few times I tried it, I, like, made sure I went... And that was a really strange thing, too. Like, one, the levels are vertical, but they're also... you You go in weird, like, the pathing for the game is so there's, strange like yeah, there's like multiple ways to get through a stage but like the the first one where you've got to like you you see the bottom of a balloon hanging at the top of the screen so you can like just jump up and grab it and that ends up taking you up and left all the way around this path back to the beginning of the stage just to dr- to like run back across nothing so it felt weird i like, did the opposite you know? i saw the string at the very beginning and I just cleared the entire level going left and right uh, on the balloons. <laughs> okay, so then, yeah, it's a different, yeah. It's just a strange, it's very weird. strange layout. But I, I, I think it kind of works with expectations, right? Like, you're thinking platformer Mario go left to right. I mean, from the start, you kind of said about the hill, 
you know, it's kind of all right at this weird verticality. And you get to the, 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 the stop of the right, like you get to the end of the stage on the right hand side and it says like an arrow pointing up. And like, that's when you kind of start to learn like, oh shit, like there's more to the stage and I got to now go up. And I think that's when you learn that this game is very vertical. And then the second level feels more like a, more like a, like a, like an area you're walking through. Not so much like a guided level. It feels like you are like, all right, you got to go here, go explore this corner, then get back in the main path, go, like, it felt very, it did feel like a, like, it felt like more like an open level design than a platformer level. It was very weird. The second one, is that the, it's like the, the ropes. Pier? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what's really weird about that one? I, f- that one kept giving me flashbacks to playing Super Mario 3D World on Wii U. I guess now on Switch too, but, like, I don't know why, because, Two very different <laughs> games and, and whatever, but like just something about that like took me to that. I, I don't know, but um, yeah, I'm really conflicted with this game overall. Like when uh, we this ended up on the list, I remember remembering rent, renting it and having a good time with it, and playing it now was fun and whatever. But yeah, it just uh, weird. I I kind of want to talk about. Um, two things with this game, like, so Cool Spot is always armed with shooting s- sparks or glitter at I don't know what it is, just a fucking shine. Yeah, a- at enemies, and you can just spam that like it's like it's contra or something. Like you shoot in all directions. Like going up and down ropes was the most convenient thing because that second stage, well, normal, you have those stupid worms all over the ropes easy right they're gone um but i was just going up and down the rope just spamming just shooting the shit out of everything now it's like that's probably one thing back then cool spot might have had an advantage in with platformers was having a quote unquote power up as a default like you always had to project all the shit at all times like mario you had to get the flower in order to do that sonic well you just had to hope for the best by jumping or he had a shield. And then, like, who else was around that time? Like, there were so many failed attempts at other games trying to compete with all that. But I always thought it was cool for a cool spot to just shoot everything. Um, weird for a soda mascot, I guess, to have an ability like that. But I guess you had to make it interesting somehow, right? Um, and then, like, there was, like, there's weird momentum in that game that never lets you fully embrace it. Like, if you walk for, like, about a second, Cool Spot starts to run. And that would help you with your jumps, but you're never running to anything, or you never have enough time to really get that run to make use of it. And I think, as visually impressive that this, as this game is, like, there's a lot of effort put into, like, the sprites and the animations and stuff. I actually do think that's pretty good. Um, the camera is not your friend. I think it's too focused on cool spot. So like whatever direction you're going in, the camera will kind of show you, but like there was a stage with all the, all the toys and like the, and like that, I don't know if it was a bathtub or whatever the hell it was that, that you're in, but like, okay. Yeah. Cause there's like two toy levels, but that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I have a comment like, about the two yeah. toy levels in a second. I'll let Mark complete his thought. Yeah. The, the part that really, like, irked me with it was that the camera would never... Maybe it was intentional, but, like, you could never see where you were landing every time you jumped. It, it would follow you on the jump so much that, like, you didn't know where you were going to land. And because the background was so parallax, it was never static, you couldn't have a visual cue from the background to know where a platform was going to be because it's moving <laughs> with you. So yeah, it's super tough. It was like a little too challenging, I feel, for this game's target audience to try to have that stuff there. Like other platformers, I feel like that was never really an issue. You always that knew fourth where you were going. that fourth level with the water. Yeah. You can't see the ships you have to jump on. Mm-hmm. The only thing that gives you the marker is the red like collectible things. However, right. once you collect them. You no longer have your marker, and I felt like I was jumping blind on any re-attempt that I did on yeah. that level. It's tough. 
Yeah. Same, same, same with the with the UFOs that are right above it, because you can only be on them for like a second, and then they drop. You see, I didn't really make it up there, Mark, and that's where I closed I my it, chapter with this game. <laughs> I made it all the way to the top of that map. I had still had no idea where to go. I couldn't like, <laughs> like this this game gives you little arrows, like little gloves, like pointing which way to go. Usually, it's recommending maybe yeah. you have to find spots, or maybe it's where like your friend is captured. Um, but I still couldn't for the life of me figure how to get out of that room. And I, I went through the rotation like five times and I just had to give up. Um, one thing real quick, I, I did think of a game that might around this time give you the like offensive, totally different. I mean, it's a platformer, but it's like totally different franchise, like super star Wars that actually came out in November of 92. So you would be yeah. shooting and wielding a lightsaber then. So I, Another example, of kind of. But again, they're not. You made me think, though, for a second. I couldn't, because like Mario, like you have to earn it, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, the yeah. So Joe, you mentioned the second toy level, and then there's a second spider level, and then there's a second water level, and then there's a second beach level, and then you talk about the level of polish. Did Halo rip off Cool Spot? Yeah. I I think I, I think, think a lot it of might have that whole. Spot. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what Matt is referring to is that you end up playing, you kind of like work your way through these stages forward. Uh, I mean, it's story wise, saving spots, friends, and then you come back through them with like a palette swap. You know, it's now nighttime, and you're you're making yeah. it through. But yeah, it's it's very. It's kind of just a mirror all the way through, and it's frustrating because it you like I think triumph over a level it feels like that because the levels are so tough sometimes that when you finally get through it, you're like, "Okay, I made it, I'm good, I don't have to see this again on to the next one, and that happens repeatedly for a while until suddenly it's not, and you're back in you know hell where you came from and it, yeah, yeah. I found that interesting. Oh, that was the other problem with the camera. But it's a good way to tie the game. Yeah, go ahead. Like when you're navigating and you're, you know, trying to avoid everything, but you can't see, again, what's below you until you're there. And, you know, an enemy from beneath, like a pixel beneath you just, like, taps your toe and you're dead. You didn't even realize what killed you. It almost feels like an off-screen kill, but, like, there's no time to react by the time you see it. Like you really can't do anything about it. Oh god, those oh, mosquitoes yeah, in that marina level. Oh my god. It it when you're talking about tracking and a a pattern to attack oh, the, what oh, fuck the bees? them. Over the bees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever flying yeah. insect it was. <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> like every time yeah. he came on screen He's dead yeah. or hit, but you like, know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, like, oh, normal, like, with the ropes in that in that stage, there's there's worms. And, like, they killed me more than anyone just because I was climbing down a rope and couldn't see. At least with the worms, yep. I would just – I kind of got to the point, like, you, or, like you're like you inferring, like, yeah. I assumed they were there, so I would shoot and just keep shooting yeah. going up or down or whatever. But yeah. the, that flying insect, as soon as that thing came on screen, well, shit, that's a hit. Fucking <laughs> move along. <laughs> I, my favorite enemy is the mice that would just throw cheese at you. Like, they didn't give a <laughs> shit. Like, I don't know why they're wearing pajamas, but <laughs> just these large-ass mice just chucking cheese like it's rocks. Like, they don't, they want to, they, they have intent to kill you. But I love that they were, like, everything else in the game was, like, I don't know, like, in the beach level, it's like crabs. There's worms. There's bees. There's these things that are just themselves, but the mice have little pajamas on. Yeah. And they're so pissed. <laughs> yeah. But well, maybe very, they wanted to bring like some... Maybe they want to bring, like, a colorful animal because everything else is purple and green spiders in that fucking place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing but black widows in there. Yeah, that was... Or green widows. I don't know. I think I'm kind of overcoming the video game thing because I had a real-life encounter with a spider. Man. It was, always, it was, a, it was an epic event. You should play Earth Little Defense by little, Force. you're getting there. I've had a little friend hanging out here on this picture uh, for about a week. I'm just letting him do his thing. Daddy long legs? Yeah, like a real tiny one, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it was one of those brown boys. Brown, 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you gotta. Yeah. About an inch. All yeah, directions. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, it, yeah. it was a real Elden Ring moon for me. <laughs> anyway. The the, um, the attic of would you <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. I was... uh, would you put this game on the Sega Genesis Mini 2? Funny thing about that. Uh I remember we were talking about the different versions that were out there and this you know this was back then where if it's on a different platform typically it's a whole different game it's not just the same game ported uh so if it's the genesis version of cool spot you might have a better time uh that looks cool to play i didn't try it. i wanted to i always pick that one to be the one that we play because of that but that's like an isometric shooter and it's like he's in the he's like going through movies like it's gex or some shit Right. That's actually the sequel to this. That's after? Yeah. Oh, I thought that was just like Sega's version of Cool Spot. So, no, because I played the Genesis version of this game, and oh. it's same deal. It's beach, it's every like, music's the same, all of that. I mean, music sounds better because it's on Genesis, and Genesis okay. has better sound. But, yeah, yeah. It, it's a... Uh, it's the same. No, you're thinking of Spot Goes to Hollywood, which is yeah. a full sequel to cool spot but the spot goes to hollywood is that on super nintendo i believe it was like i think the primary platforms for that i have have to look it up i believe the primary platforms were the 32-bit right so like Mm -hmm. playstation was its target platform and i think probably like a windows port or something And and then they ended up retrofitting it yeah back to genesis um and it probably just never made it to super nintendo because of the you know 64 coming out or whatever right okay is my hmm. guess i'd have to look at it yeah so uh, okay so back to your it, question i don't then. think it ever made it to nintendo yeah i'm okay. seeing platforms for spot goes to hollywood as the mega drive genesis the saturn and playstation gotcha i didn't run it yourself. enough times for for it to be a thing um <laughs> if it would this be on the mini probably not i don't know many licensed games like this to end up being on stuff like that but even if that wasn't even an issue it probably still wouldn't i just don't think i i think we're the only people talking about it (laughs) i i think people probably remember it more for just like remember how weird that was or remember that there used to be mascot games because we really don't have mascot games a lot anymore right yeah, I mean, it's kind of, I don't know. More or less, it, I mean, not from companies, I don't think so. Um, they're rare now. Still kind of happen, but not as frequent as maybe when this came out. Um, I wouldn't see it on the Mini, but I would see this on Nintendo Switch Online. Ah, yeah, that's a very, yeah, good point. Seems apt for that. Like, nobody asked for it. Um, you mentioned it. before, Mark, being very into mascots. Mm-hmm. Who was your favorite mascot back in these days? Was it Cool Spot? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like with the Lego recreations, Cool um, Spot may have been. Uh, I was going to say the sunglasses, probably. That, too. Yeah. Um. Uh, it, it was weird. I. So, Sonic was probably number one. Um. And then I had a little fling with Bubsy. And this was like we all had a fling with Bubsy. I mean, but like, yeah, and, and this was before you know, obviously before the memes. Oh yeah, everything. yeah. Um, and then I also liked Arrow the Acrobat. Mm-hmm. Arrow might have been second, honestly. Um, but yeah, at like, I don't like out of like mascots like that, like based off of like food and stuff and drinks. I didn't really know too many in games. I think Cool Spot might have been the only one. I know, like, the Noid existed, but I completely missed that whole wave of mascots. Like, I never... The, yeah. I, th- I think the that The Noid was, was just before, before our time. time. Yeah. Because, do uh, you know the story behind the Noid? I did. And I forgot it. Or the death of the Noid, I should say. It's more the death of the Noid as the, the story. Yeah. No. That's the... Yeah. There's an interesting tale. I, I encourage folks to go look it up. It's a, a sad, 
Sad tale. <laughs> but they brought the Noid back recently and put him in the Crash Bandicoot Auto Runner on mobile. That's okay. That you know come back somewhere. Yeah. We're in a post Fortnite world. That stuff just doesn't shock me anymore. That like, all right, we're just Ex- gonna yeah, throw exactly. this thing in there. Whatever. Yeah, is he in Fortnite yet? That's the main thing. Actually, in that time, would have been yeah. a more appropriate spot. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Oh, cool, cool spot in there too. I... Give him an AK. <laughs> yeah, why not? We did have a uh, a Chester Cheetah video game. I I remember that. You just resurfaced that. Um, I forgot. I I did. I would rent that. I loved Cheetos as a kid. So you know what? Chester might have been second. It was yeah, Sonic, then Chester. Yeah, and again, sunglasses. That's just a 90s thing. And then It's the key, yeah. Uh, they all so we need them. Sonic with sunglasses and spots, and that might be... <laughs> yeah. Matt, do you have a favorite mascot? Like the video game form, or just in... I don't know. Whatever. If you saw a little character, you were like, that's my mascot, that's my guy. I like that I, little, honestly, little gal. Honestly, I think... I think Crash. I think that's where that little bit of an age difference between us comes in. Because... I mean, I had a Super Nintendo. I played it, but like, I didn't like, I, like, I, like the games were there. Kind of, I never really like pursued a game per se. It didn't. That didn't happen to like PlayStation. And, dude, Crash had the balls to go to the Nintendo headquarters and yell at Mario. Like that takes 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 some guts to go to the man's house. I, you know, you're bringing up a, a great point, Matt, which is the brand and mascot rivalry, which I thought had died in the '90s until. Last week, I was driving north, and I drove up past this Burger King, and on the sign outside of the Burger King, which is sitting opposite corner from the McDonald's, the marquee reads, a meal fit for a king, not for a clown. Damn. And I said, 90s brand wars are back on the menu, baby. (laughs) <laughs> you stopped and got a Whopper, right? I mean, you had to. I, At least some chicken fingers. Let's say yes. And see, we can and like, say yes. You could have got like, those chicken fingers with a cigarette in it. <laughs> Did you see that weird story I, this week? No. <laughs> but that, honestly, chicken fingers taste like cigarettes. So, you know, that's not too far off. Well, chicken I mean, fries is what I meant to say. Chicken fries. I mean, you could appreciate McDonald's sign because they at least uh, they they tagged their own with like it looked like a Ronald McDonald but silhouette of a hatchet man, you know. Oh, that's pretty good. And they're just like, come get some. <laughs> um, I thinking of mascots. Um, it's been a little while since we've had a mascot platformer or mascot game of any kind, so I don't want to limit you to just platformers but what i'd like to do now is just take an opportunity to help some of these brands out who might need assistance in revitalizing uh or engaging the the youth of today so mark matt i'm gonna give you a mascot and i want you to describe the video game for the mascot is that okay work? ready okay uh, so our first mascot is mr clean what was it? He broke up just a little bit. Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. Oh, well, his game just came out. That Power Wash Simulator. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say Hitman. <laughs> <laughs> Neither one of those um, two I'm extremes, gonna... wherever you go with that. <laughs> on the nose or on the nose? I, yeah, I guess Power Wash Simulator would make sense. That would, yeah. Um. I'm going to drop these in chat as I say them, too, just in case I break up over audio. Um, you've got the quick reference. But our, our next one is uh, the Gerber Baby. <laughs> uh, hmm. I kind of... Um, the Baby's Day Out to have a game. Wasn't there a movie called like Baby's Day know. Out or something like that? Uh, I feel like that's a platformer. Maybe. I'm, looking I'm thinking like something like root beer tapper where the baby is just switching <laughs> between conveyor belts and is only you have to eat the formula and nothing else. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like you'll put poop on the Dude, conveyor belt, you'll put like other babies 
So yeah, don't eat the other babies. Mm -hmm. It does have a game. It's on Sega Genesis. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, why wouldn't it be? Uh, you ready for your next one? Oh no, I, I, oh, I. Guess. All right, I have to bookmark this. I gotta watch some gameplay later. It looks awful. Your next mascot is the Morton's Salt Girl. Okay. Hmm. I'm having trouble picturing her. I keep thinking the um, he was the suntan lotion. Her, with the person asking, oh, yeah, I, I that's... get them confused. Well, I, not confused, but interchanged. Morton Salt. Um, the Morton Salt girl, she's like got all yellow, yellow raincoat on it's raining and the umbrella, and it's raining salt behind her. Yeah. I gotta get away from platformers. Um... I think Wait, is it, are, are we alternating, right? Is that the thing? Yeah, but I was just, you know, kind of letting you go until you went, and then... I'm thinking, like, it's first person. <laughs> and it's, like, kind of similar to Thief. But when you're traveling, you gotta try to stay covered. Like, mm. trying to get from point A to point B but without getting sawed on you, or else you'll melt. Just you're a slug. A, of course, there's a Funko Pop <laughs> as I'm searching around. Um, why is there a Funko Pop of the Morton Salt Girl? Fourteen ninety five on Amazon.com. Free shipping, by the way. Anyway, um, <laughs> so all right, I want to because I don't know the. I want to know the mystery behind this. Why is she by herself? Why is it raining on her? And it looks like it's just on her too. Why? Is she oh. dumping salt on the ground? So I want one of those walking simulators where you go through a, like a day in the life and you, I don't know, maybe all the mechanics, but somehow you open doors and it leads you to alternate timelines of what would have happened and get the history and figure out why it's only raining on her and why she's dumping salt and why does she kind of look happy about it? It, I want to know the mystery. So, she, yeah, like, she walks into this town, and she, and like, she's realizing, oh, it's snowing. Why is it snowing here? It's like, it's like July. And it's like, no, it's not snow. It's salt. And then all these demons from her, from her psyche start haunting her. And she's, she's in Salty Hill. Yeah, I, I like the fact, like, these demons <laughs> I, are named, like, Pepper and Paprika and... Oregano. And <laughs> ah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a psychological horror. I really... <laughs> the, the thing I like a lot about the Morton Salt Girl as a video game is I think the color palette of that is so, like, stark. I think, like, you could make this really bleak, dark world and she just pops with bright yellow. I think it'd be a really cool indie game. It kind of... Uh, let's change gears a little. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, I was like, she uh, reminded me of um, Little Nightmares. Oh, it does have that vibe, yeah. Mm. Um, I guess I'm, I'm buying me a Funko Pop today, Matt. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Um, I wonder if there's a Funko Pop of our next mascot from Little Caesars. Oh. It's Little Caesar. Oh, man. Um, okay. All right, so no matter what, you have to have a button map to him saying, Pete, pizza. And you just <laughs> spam it. I don't care what game it is. Yeah. I don't, yeah. You have to have that at least. Dedicated pizza button. <laughs> yeah. That's Maybe it's a game where you need to... The whole goal is to say pizza pizza. You need to remind people that Little Caesars exists. And your, your whole thing is to run into competing pizza restaurants up behind people in line about to order pizza and press the pizza pizza button so they can go, boy, this line sure is long. I'd love to leave and have a quick pizza at Little Caesars. I kind of want it to draw some inspiration from another great mascot game, Burger King Sneak King. And I want ah. you to literally go up behind pizza or <laughs> go up behind people and just like go in their ear and just go, 
pizza, pizza. And then they turn around, they jump up all scared, you present them a nice, hot, and ready $5. So, <laughs> so good one. it's like, he could be a guest character in Dead by Daylight. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking, like, it's a, it, 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 it's like a beat-em-up, it's like Golden Axe, but you have the spear, oh. and you're spearing pizzas. So you're yeah that that's that's how I'm seeing it like that's pretty good. He still looks like that's his dumb good. goofy cartoony self, but everything around him is like super grotesque. I said you, you I like that. Then little Caesars too. Like you could have alternate an alternate costume because you kind of got like the the logo right, but then there's the mascot like the one has a little bit more detail with like the green, mm. and you got the, you see the tongue like the more front yeah. facing one. So like you can kind of go two ways with that. I feel like. Yeah, that's true. I'm going to throw your next one out there. It's uh, Nesquik. Or Quick the Rabbit. Oh, I'm familiar with Nesquik. Mm. I I need to see what he looks like. Yeah, he looks like the asshole I remember. Okay, so this is going to be... Um, a heist game. You're you're gonna you're, you're gonna be stringing how many how many banks can you rob, and while avoiding the cops. Um, it, it goes between two sections. So like you, first you're breaking in to get the money, and then there's the chase sequences where you're running on foot, and you can kind of do some parkour stuff if you want, or you can like kick cars back at the cops or something, and uh, you're trying to get enough money to buy all the nest quick in the world. So you can just, uh, the, your dream is to just only ingest that 24-7, have it, like, hooked up into your veins. Like, that's how much he loves his brand. Um, the, he is, uh, Death Stranding. He's just a man delivering a set of parcels, Nesquik, in various ways, strawberry, <laughs> Chocolate, powder, you name it, he'll bring it to you. But you gotta go through the treks of life and self-reflection while bringing the grid of the United States back together and all the turmoil along the way while delivering <laughs> at two, this quick to everyone. At two, at two times speed. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I think, like, I'm you, give you, a- you can't go fast. He can't use his bunny speed until he connects... That part of the bridge, or the bridge's oh. central hub thing. Oh man, it's been a while since I played I that game. feel like someone could pretty easily mod Quicks the Rabbit into Death Stranding. Like That seems like something <laughs> that's doable. If you're out there listening and you have those skills, please do it. Send it to us and we'll, we'll play it. We'll stream it. How about that? Um, let me give you a challenge here. Betty Crocker. Um... There was an original Betty Crocker human mascot, but for the last, uh, however, you know, long, it's mostly just been this red spoon with the word Betty Crocker. So you want it to be the spoon? I'm just throwing it, whatever you want it to be, man. This is your game. Okay. You see, I think uh, this is where you can do uh, subliminal. Uh, advertising here. I think you make a game, but you don't even say it's a Betty Crocker game until it's revealed. You play as Betty Crocker through a series of events. Uh, it's pretty good. This is going to be Doom inspired. Okay. Uh, you know, this is taking place in like the forties or something, and so. It's mostly, like, uh, black and white visuals with the red spoon as your weapon. And you are going through house to house just beating up um, awful shitty husbands. And you're saving, all the, you're saving all the housewives. So the only red is the spoon because it's drenched in blood. I love it. Yeah, a feminist anthem for 
uh yeah the classic i don't have time to maybe potentially connect all the dots here does general mills have an arm in betty crocker or is that they are likely connected i can do some digging but i believe they are because just place her in checks quest if, if that's the case yeah, you're also killing all all like healthy food, and um, you're only eating baked goods. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like, yeah, that, I, I think that's good. They are. And they are. They owned are by General Mills. Yeah. Yep. Guest appearance. Jack's quest. Here we go. Yep. She puts the beaten diabetes. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> And die. She puts a die in there too because she's killing shit. But... <laughs> Our next mascot is the big pen, big pen thing. Whatever that is. Okay. I mainly think of a pinball game by the way he looks. I can't get away from that. Nah, man. I'm uh, I'm thinking like. Um, Devil May Cry or 3D Ninja Gaiden, where like that pen is your is your weapon. It's mightier than the sword. You know what I'm saying? So like you're just going in, and you're just uh just going to town on office supplies. I guess. <laughs> if they like, made whatever... that. Oh, go ahead. I was just saying, but whatever mistakes you make are your own. You can't undo them because you're you know it's a pen. I say uh, get, well, maybe not, maybe not Mr. Jaffe, but you get a team that is better capable than that shitty drawn to death game they put out and put on some big licensing and make it good. And then you have like all the different color, color pencils being represented, all the other big products. Be a good, good free for all with some characters you can create in the big universe. Uh, you're, I'm, I'm kind of trimming the list here. I had quite a bit, but I'm, I'm being selective here. I think we'll, we'll do maybe, uh, two more. Okay. And I, I think our next one is going to be a little bit of a challenge for you. It's little Debbie of little Debbie's snacks and cakes. I gotta, I gotta look up what she looks like again. It's a space shooter. Right, she had the hat. Yeah. You... I, I I dropped a picture of her in, in the Discord, oh, okay. Mark. It's a space shooter, and it's inspired by Cosmic Brownies. Little Debbie the space shooter? Oh, it's inspired by Cosmic Brownies, that's why. <laughs> Alright, fair. <laughs> Go through space, destroy an asteroids that become the sprinkles in your armor on your brownie. <laughs> fair. And... Um... and... You get the secret recipe from Annie, who's in some galaxy that we discovered two weeks ago with that Hubble thing. This is going to be like Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Mm. But all your weapons are your snacks. They're like, not just the snacks, but like snack inspired as well. Like, yeah, I don't have an exact example. But I'm sure, like, I don't know, like, you could probably have caramel apple grenades or something, you know, like, mm. stuff like that. Uh, is she the zebra cakes lady? Hmm? Miss Debbie? Zebra cakes, is that, is that little Debbie? I feel like... I think it is. It is. It is. Yeah, you... I, I see a whole zebra cakes level, uh, just all <laughs> black and white, and you're yeah making your way through. Uh, all right, I got your final mascot here. This one's going to be a tough one, but it's Europeans Seven Up mascot, none other than Fido Dido. What? Yes, they did not have Cool Spot over in Europe. I... They had Fido Dido. Dude, this art style was everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, it was. This reminds me of 
We had a we we there was a TV there was a cartoon series we had in the nineties had a similar look. It was like uh some some redhead character. I forgot her name. Pepper Ann? I think it was Pepper Ann. Hmm, yeah, that has that yeah, similar vibe. Um Hmm. So you know what? <laughs> this this would be the mod. This, you, you just throw in a little dude into a giant beach. You stole my idea. That was going to be, <laughs> this is the real cool spot game. You just put him in, you just substitute out. He's not, you're not collecting spots or collecting blunts or something. I don't know what, I don't know what this guy does. You uh, go around, you, uh, what can be captured? It, I don't know. But like the meter, instead of it being cool, it could be swag. Walk, nice. walk, walking yeah. around, shooting the same glitter thing, because why not? It's a video game. I don't know what he saves, though. That's the only thing I'm lacking. He saves... It's just, it's just, uh, just palette swaps of him. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> or, or you could have it uh, interconnected in the 7-Up universe, and have him... Uh, he was the one that actually captured all the original spots, and with the you know, spots friends Ooh. and caged them up. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that makes sense because he wants to be the mascot, not Cool Oh Spot. yeah. Mhm. So like there there's a little and then he create rivalry there. The inner mascot war, which yeah, you might have your cross brand mascot wars, but what if the same brand had a mascot war in itself, like a civil war? And then after you do 13 of these games, you can finally make Marvel's 7 up Civil War. And waste everyone's You've got time. A whole, <laughs> yeah, a whole world ahead of you. Um, yeah, the there was a Fido Dido game being developed by the same folks what made the Chester Cheetah game, um, but it was canceled because of Cool Spot's popularity, and uh, the publisher of the game went under before it could be released. So, did Fido exist before Cool Spot? Seemingly, yeah. From what I get, there was a cartoon based around Fido. Ooh, yeah, there's Fido wants some revenge. Like, yeah, I think you could have a, a fun, interesting revenge tale. First doodled in 1985 on a napkin. On a napkin, as every hey, great idea how, begins. Uh, that's how Ninja Turtle started. Wait, he has on a, a napkin. He has a mantra. Hold on. Do we know he has oh. a mantra? <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> Fido is for Fido. Fido is against no one. Fido is youth. Fido has no age. Fido sees everything. Fido judges nothing. Fido is innocent. Fido is powerful. Fido comes from the past. Fido is the future. Fido is a god that needs to be taken down by Cool Spot. <laughs> Fido bleeds. That's what. <laughs> Well, we're going to see if Cool Spot can take down any of the games on our list. As we wrap up this episode and rank Cool Spot among the rest, freecheese.com slash the list is where you can find our ranking of all 28 games so far this season. Only 17 more to go after today. <laughs> I've got the list pulled up here, fellows, and... Uh, I don't know about this one. I... Yeah, like I think it has it had potential. It does have it has some neat mechanics. It has a weird level of polish I wasn't expecting from a game like this. Yeah. But I think it's trying to do maybe too much or it doesn't utilize it properly either. I don't know. Yeah. Like Yeah, it's it, it's it's a weird mixed bag. Um It's, I don't know, it, it it led to a lot of, the, the game led me to a lot of doing, like, a lot of overcorrecting, and that is eventually became my, like, my fall every time, and not something I really want to go back to ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to say it's downright offensive, like, but, yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot going on, and I don't think it, it knew what to do with it. Well, 
would you say that it's downright better or worse than Paperboy 2? I'm having conflicts with that because I, I think I think this is a better game than Paperboy 2, but I am more entertained by playing Paperboy 2. I like this more than Paperboy 2. Yeah, I... I do as well. I don't think I put this above And I Billy. can make some arguments to... I think I, I like, like Billy Hatcher mm-hmm. better than this. No, I think I do like Billy Hatcher better than this, actually. That's a good point. But I like this better than Sunset Overdrive, to an extent. Which is weird, but... Yeah, I don't know. Like, it plays better Does than it... NHL Stanley Cup. I mean, it's weird. It's, it's weird. Yeah, yeah. It, like, yeah, if you put it above something, it, you use the argument to go above, like, three different things all of a sudden. I, um, I, I think, I think, I think just, yeah, I guess just right above Paperboy. I'm going to try to, I'm, I'm going to give Billy a, a little win one time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, this game is not bad. Um, the point I was gonna, I, n- I never got around to saying it. Like, this reminds me of like that air, like the, your mascot or your um, uh, franchise platform, like like the Lion King, right? Like, it's not a bad game. It's unfairly difficult in some points, but like uh, the core mechanics are there and it's pretty to look at. Same thing with Aladdin. Like, I, I think like it's. With those games, maybe just just below them, but that's what the, this reminds me of. It reminds me of what you guys have said. Like it's a rental, you get so far, and you kind of just let it drift away after that. Um, and I don't think the Seven Up mascot has as much clout as a uh, a Simba or an Aladdin. I mean, that depends on the company you're talking about, man. I I hold Cool Spot in much higher regard than any Disney character. Well, it's. It's funny because Virgin made those too. Yeah. If you have right in line. Yeah. Um, in fact, yeah, uh, David Perry, who would later go on to co-found Gaikai, which of course is the base for PlayStation Now and Remote Play. And mm. It's not PlayStation Now us. anymore, dude. Get it right. Oh, sorry. It's PlayStation, PlayStation Plus. Plus Premium. <laughs> Stupid. Uh- um, anyway, yeah, I, he was involved with, with Aladdin specifically, I remember. So, um, I think this feels okay at, at the new 27. Do we feel good about that? Yeah. I, yeah, I think yeah. I would much rather, not that I'm begging and itching and clawing to go back to Billy Hatcher, but I think I'd rather see Billy Hatcher through to the end than this. Yeah, I agree. Oh, there you have it. Um, Be sure to check out the list. Uh, Stay tuned to see where everything shakes out. Um, Curious to see what else people think we might be voting on. So if you've got a guess or um, maybe not a recommendation because our season's already locked in, but it may be a recommendation for season 11, podcast at thefreecheese.com is where you can send an email. Until next week. Um, actually let's talk about next week real quick. We're going to do a little bit different of a thing than we've been doing this season so far. And in fact, talk about the season so far. Uh, we're going to look back at all 28 games in categories, um, and just kind of talk about the list in chunks, um, perhaps make some movements, uh, things like that. We're going to just talk about where we've been and where we currently are and a little bit of where we're going. So stay tuned for that in episode 464. Until then, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, listener, for listening. See you next time.